the uh, main issue with dengue is na the second and third infections are even more worse than the first infection so this is a quite a paradox uh, many of the diseases uh, second and third infection we do better but uh, the problem with the dengue is we will not do any uh, better you may do even worse so dengue has a uh, three uh, zero worse dnv1 dnv2 and dnv3 so what we are seeing right now these days is especially in a uh, rainy monsoon part uh, rainy season monsoon uh, we are uh, getting quite a bit of breeding grounds for uh, the aedes aegypti and we are uh, we are seeing children adults suffering with dengue coming to the icu in a very bad shape so the main issue with dengue is it causes uh, pan endothelitis pan serositis okay so it causes inflammation of all the serosa and uh, this causes uh, transudation of the uh, transudation ex exudation of the plasma and the contents within the blood vessel into the interstitium so this leads to hypovolemia the main issue is uh, hypovolemia so what happens with hypovolemia is it causes acute kidney injury and uh, this uh, third spacing of fluids leads to pleural effusion ascites and uh, other fluid retention syndromes so uh, there are different phases of the illness it is simple dengue fever and it is dengue shock syndrome and it is dengue shock syndrome and there is dengue hemorrhagic fever so uh, the spectrum of illness is threefold so we have uh, we have dengue simple dengue fever we have dengue shock syndrome and dengue hemorrhagic fever so simple dengue fever uh, the patient will have uh, myalgia as arthralgia as uh, high grade fever 101 102 and again it is undifferentiated you cannot uh, find a particular organ which is uh, causing the fever and uh, all the malaise and all these symptoms so and this fever is followed by this uh, dengue simple dengue is followed some in some cases it goes into dengue shock syndrome so in these patients uh, what happens is when there is a lot of endothelial inflammation there is loss of intravascular fluid into the extravascular compartment and uh, this uh, lossage of fluid will lead to hypovolemia and uh, systemic uh, hypoperfusion that will lead to acute kidney injury and uh, it also leads to uh, ischemic hepatitis it also leads to uh it also leads to you know there is something called an expanded dengue syndrome so expanded dengue syndrome uh, was coiled from uh, many observational studies in uh, maharashtra area so what happened in expanded dengue syndrome uh, dengue fever then with dengue shock with multi organ involvement there is an elevated there is elevation in creatinine there is elevation in sgot sgpt so multiple organs are affected multiple organs are affected and uh, this is called an expanded dengue syndrome it's a very important uh, mcq for the competitive exams as well and you can see it in practice at many places expanded dengue syndrome dengue with uh, multi organ failure not only acute kidney injury uh, there is also hepatocellular injury elevated uh, sgot sgpt and a complete ischemic uh, hepatitis symptoms uh, elevated sgot sgpt so uh, this uh, other problem with uh, dengue is the thrombocytopenia the thrombocytopenia can cause spontaneous gastrointestinal bleeding we even lost uh, few of the doctors to dengue because of uh, acute uh, onset visceral bleeding so even uh, during the end of the second stage of the pandemic there was a co infection with dengue and uh, covid 19 and some patients uh, dengue was not detected in the patients who were on uh, oral anticoagulants and antiplatelet drugs so dengue was not picked up their platelets were less and they were put on uh, somehow uh, oral anticoagulant and this patient even had a lot of bleeding and all the complications so main issue with dengue is the thrombocytopenia the, the thrombocytopenia can cause uh, acute uh, gastrointestinal bleed hematopoiesis acute intracranial bleeds so the threshold uh, for transferring uh, platelets in dengue is uh, uh, 10000 as per the american uh, blood banks and uh, uh, so uh, less than 10000 uh, we may need to transfuse our platelets if the patient is not bleeding but if the patient is bleeding you can transfuse at 30 40 50 60 at whatever is irrespective of the 
platelet level if the patient is bleeding you need to transfuse and if the patient is not bleeding and if he is not having shock if he is not if he is hemodynamically stable you can monitor till uh, platelet uh, count of 10000 or 20000 some uh, people uh, disagree with the 10000 level uh, if you are in a remote peripheral place where you are not having many helping hands you can even transfuse at 20000 level okay so this is for the normal patients who are not having a uh, fever a sepsis or any other uh, co infections so if the patient is on antiplatelet drugs he is having fever and he is systemically ill he is having shock don't wait for the 10000 transfuse at 20000 okay so uh, so there is no specific transfusion trigger universal trigger if the patient is hemodynamically stable clinically stable with no organ failures you can wait till 10000 as well we have seen walking talking patients uh, moving about patients ambulatory patients with platelet 10000 okay in the same time if the patient is having hypotension uh, organ injury organ failures and low platelet you better transfuse okay so the fluid resuscitation is very important in uh, dengue uh, during the initial presentation the patient might be hypovolemic and uh, uh, when you when he, when he comes to you if you check the if you do the hemogram he might be having hemo concentration his hemoglobin will be 15 or 16 for that matter and after you do the fluid resuscitation the hemocrit will come down the hemocrit will come down so extent of raise in hemocrit is an indication that there is a severe uh, plasma loss fluid loss so if the patient is having thrombocytopenia and anemia that means that he is bleeding uh, from into the gastrointestinal system or near the system okay especially gastrointestinal system uh, so if he is having higher hemoglobin that means he is not bleeding but he is having a lot of third spacing into the uh, you know peritoneal cavity pleural cavity and elsewhere okay so this is one of the few things that you need to be observant and after you start fluid resuscitation please keep a uh, check don't give excess fluid don't fluid overload the patient and uh, after uh, giving fluid if the patient's effusions are getting worse ascites is getting worse his oxygen requirement is going up please be very careful don't fluid overload the patient and the other thing about dengue is uh, uh there might be other co infections in dengue i mean uh, the other coins and uh, dengue fever and they might be having any bacterial sepsis as well and uh, they can also have renal dysfunction hepatocellular dysfunction so this is called expanded dengue syndrome i mean uh, co infections with the multi organ failure in a dengue positive patient with a systemically bad shape okay so this is called expanded dengue syndrome okay so there is no antiviral treatment for dengue uh, only thing is the you have to give symptomatic treatment